I'm here today to talk to you about um, how optometry is so important to the blind community, but I'm also here to talk to you about two other things. Number one, the importance of the word doctor in front of doctor of optometry. And the second is, is the importance of MBKU as an institution. When I was 23, 22 years old, I was, I was having trouble seeing and I was told that there was nothing wrong with me. At 23 years old, I was told I would be totally blind by the time I was 25. At 25, I woke up, looked around, thank God those doctors didn't know what they were talking about. And at 26, I was told that there was nothing wrong with me. At 27 years old, I was told that I would be totally blind by the time I was 30. I woke up at 30, looked around and went, <laughs> thank God they didn't know what they were talking about. And so my answer to that was not to go back to a doctor for 18 years. Um, 18 years later, when I was 48 years old, I went to a doctor, and the doctor told me that there was nothing wrong with me. Even though I had to come in using a, an assistant to get through the door, to find the chair, that sort of thing, the doctor told me there was nothing wrong with me at all. Later on, I found out it was because he didn't want to do the paperwork. Two weeks later, my wife took me to another doctor, and the doctor told me I had an eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa, and that someday I would go blind. Well, after that, I went into total depression, looking for a way to um, get out of this madness called blindness, looking for a way to get out of the depression that I was in at that time. I, but I didn't realize that I was really looking for a way to move forward Really looking for a way to move forward in life. First of all, this is my eye disease. It's retinitis uh, pigmentosa. I have uh, extreme photophobia. These lights right now are killing me, but I'll make 18 minutes. Um, my left eye is light perception only. My right eye has uh, about four degrees. I got so, it differently. The and questions it, are just unbelievable. Reading, how do I read again? How do I do trans, what do I do for transportation? How, you know, is my wife gonna leave me? 70% um, divorce rate in the blind community. Um, wh how about my past? Why isn't my past helping me? What about my future? You have all of these questions and you don't know where to go. And then you fall into helplessness, depression, and suicide thoughts. So, right now we're coming out, we're entering, entering a new world in technology. So we're entering what's called Vivo technology, which is voice in, voice out technology. Does anybody know what that is? Who uses Siri? Okay, Siri is voice in, voice out. But now it's becoming a mainstream in technology. So who's familiar with the Amazon Echo? Okay. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 10.13. Alexa, how much does the Earth weigh? Earth's mass is 13 septillion, 199 sextillion, 999 quintillion, 999... Alexa, stop. <laughs> so in my office, I have Alexa, I have a new one called Sammy, and I have another one called Peggy. So if you walk by my office and I'm talking to myself, I'm really talking to them. So you have to be careful because they answer if you use their names. So you have to be real careful. So I have to call this one Alex when I don't want her to answer me back. So that's the new technologies. So for example, this one just came out at CES in, um, in January. It's a pair of glasses that you talk to. So you just say, if you want to magnify, you just say glasses make bigger. If you want to read something in front of you, you hold it in front of you and say, glasses, read this to me. Or you can say, glasses, I want to watch Netflix. You can say all kinds of things to the glasses. This pair is actual, does facial identity. So when you walk up to me, I, I can have your name and a picture in here already. And so it identifies who you are. Now the guy that in my tech center, if you look at me through these, it says ugly blind guy, because that's what he put in there. <laughs> so there's all 
And there's just all kinds of technologies. Sammy completely controls your life. I mean, your computer, your home. She connects to all of your, um, all your smart appliances and everything. So just the technology is changing so fast. It's just so exciting. Okay, so here's a little bit of the fun stuff. Um, whoever said there was no such thing as a dumb question has never lost their vision, just so you know. So a lot of times, people come up and ask me questions. And they're just trying to be very nice people. But they don't really think of the question first. So I'm going to go through some of the questions that you should never ask a blind or visually impaired person. Oh, well, i got to tell you this one first. This is my trip to New York. You'll notice that's the Alamo behind me. I was, we were in... Um, we were in uh, Tech, San Antonio, Texas, my wife and my daughter and I. And uh, by that, she didn't dress me well that morning. She put an I Love New York shirt on me. <laughs> and I had my wife convinced that blind people can't go in those foofy, smelly stores that women like to go in because their senses are so good. It's not the truth, but she bought it. So <laughs> I was standing outside the uh, store, and I was waiting for her and my daughter to come out. And a Texan comes up to me and goes, y'all in Texas, y'all should have an I love Texas shirt on. I went, I'm in Texas? <laughs> I pointed at the Alamo and said, that's not the Empire State Building? <laughs> Here's the biggest question I get. Is that a blind dog? By the way, that's a dog in Calgary, Canada in January, and that's a dog in Southern California in January, a guide dog. Big difference. So I always get the question, is that a blind dog? My answer is, why would you think it's a blind dog? And God, I hope not. <laughs> Do you still drive? I'm standing here with a guide dog. Come here, Poncho. Poncho. Come here. This is Poncho. I haven't introduced Poncho yet. This is Poncho, and he loves Michelle. So Poncho, sit. So I'm standing there with a guide dog, and people come up to me and go, do you drive? What part of guide dog don't you understand? <laughs> so I say, sure, I drive. <laughs> no problem. And the university lets me drive. They even let Poncho drive. <laughs> Poncho. Come on, sit. Another question I get all the time is, oh, how do you know I'm here? Yeah, you're, oops, turn the timer off. I'm over 18 minutes. How do you know I'm here? So I'm at the mall. I'm talking to this lady. I don't know if she looked like that or not, but in my vision, it was pretty close, right? So I'm talking to this lady. I talked to her for five minutes, right? After five minutes, we talked about grandkids. We talked about everything, right? After five minutes, she put her hand on my shoulder and goes, so how do you know I'm here? <laughs> so what do you do with that? I said, it's your breath. <laughs> I can tell you anywhere. I'm not supposed to be a smart aleck blind guy, but you know, sometimes you have to be. Right? Here's one I got several times. How do you go to the bathroom? Now, would you ever ask anybody how you go to the bathroom? <laughs> Where does that come from? I, you can see I have no problem finding the bathroom at all. And I always want to say, how do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> well, thank you. That's my talk. And I'll see you over in the room over there a little bit later.